what's up YouTube capital G here so guys today I want to talk about Sukiyomi uh, Sukiyomi was a card that a lot of people were enthralled to see finally get unbanned uh, definitely justice deserved and if my memory serves me correctly the card has been banned somewhere between six and seven years so if you're like me you didn't play in GOAT format you have probably never competitively used a Sukiyomi uh, at least, you know, at a premier event, uh, regional, YCS, something like that, outside of like a locals or whatever. All right, now, I think that a lot of the more knowledgeable duelists really could predict what was going to happen with this card. Uh, Uncle WK basically hit it on the head. He predicted that basically everybody and their mama, a, a lot of the, you know, um, best competitive duelists would basically try and splash the card in everything from Gravekeepers to Plant Synchro to Dark World to any deck you can think of. And then roughly about a month later would say, you know, this card's a little more situational than we think. Yeah, it's great for killing Ryo, but how many other times do I have it in my hand and I never want to summon it because there really isn't anything great to do with it. Now, this isn't by any means a Sukiyomi Bash video. The, 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 the card is flat out amazing. I definitely think that it has its place and its applications in the meta. But if you're like me... Uh, have you noticed that if when you look at YCS Toronto, you look at the top decks, you look at the top 32, is it me or was Sukiyomi completely non-existent? It's like, was the card even unbanned or was the card just not legal? Because it's not anywhere. Now, I will say this. I expected a lot of people to play it. I didn't expect them to do well. So, honestly, on my shock meter, I'll go no higher than a 4. But even not, e not even like a rogue you know, anti-meta stun deck with, like, a Sukiyomi uh, play, and it, it got me to thinking, to be honest, I think that Sukiyomi, I mean, Sukiyomi is a fine card, but when you really look at this format, I think that it's still just far too passive, and it's far too slow. Like, Delke said, I mean, yeah, it's great when you're trying to reflip a Raikou or a Snowman, but those plays are so passive, and your opponent is, you know, they're doing all these explosive plays, Sukiyomi is really not gonna, it's not gonna answer those plays, it's really not gonna counter that. Not to mention, the card can easily cause you to overextend trying to reuse a flip effect or try to put a monster face down. And even though a lot of people would agree that this format is slower, I think that this format is situationally faster. What do I mean when I say situationally faster? I mean, you have a lot of decks out there like Karakuris, like Geargeas, like windups that can appear to start the game off slow. I mean, Geargeas can start off with just a set monster, uh, the you know gear arm thing, gear armor thing, or windups where they summon a Ryo or they summon a windup rabbit and activate duality. And it's like you know, set of D prison. Okay, maybe they're gonna try and play this a control deck. Uh, they're gonna try and play control this game, and then the next thing you know. They summon Magician, they trigger Shark, and it's like, oh, wow, they've got five monsters on board. Or, you know, against Gyrgyz, they summon, you know, uh, the little Bora wind-up Shark guy, and it's like, wow, they just made three Karakuri Synchros in one turn and OTK'd me. You know what I mean? So it's like every deck feels a little bit like a light switchy, where they can kind of just turn on that speed at the drop of a hat. It doesn't feel like last format, where every single deck had a stupid broken play that it could do turn one from... Future Fusion to, you know, Zexcalibur, OT King, and wind up looping five card. It doesn't feel as dumb as last format, but this format does seem like you're almost on the razor's edge every single turn. Um, so I look at Sukiyomi, and I honestly think, does anybody really think that there'd be a difference between one and three Sukiyomi right now? Like, if you, if you were allowed to play three Sukiyomi... Do you think that YCS Toronto would have changed at all? Do you think that the same decks wouldn't have topped? The same results wouldn't have happened? And this is all kind of leading me to, you know, my uh, the return of series. Now, a lot of those videos, I did play Devil's Advocate. But there were videos where I really thought, no, this card could probably come back. And I think that what, what makes a lot of people think that cards shouldn't return is more fear than actual evidence and knowledge. You know, they think of a time where this card was absolutely destroying things and where it was so good. Because even if you listen to Billy Brick's podcast, he was like, Sukiyomi shouldn't come back. And his reasoning was just, why? What? Like, what good does it do? But then you look at the event and it's like, it doesn't do any good. In fact, it does nothing. Like, my answer, and I told you guys, if your answer is just, why should it come back? My answer is always, why not? I mean, why, why shouldn't it come back? I mean... When you look at some of these cards that should be unbanned, it's like, 
they come back and they have all this hoopla and everybody has a pep rally and then they do absolutely nothing and uh asian oz white dragon my rival and i love him he's definitely a good player he's kind of on this whole bandwagon of thousand or not thousand a tribe infecting virus should never come back and i think that it's mainly spearheaded by the atlanteans and i did read them and i thought man those would be pretty good with tribe virus but can we at least all agree that atlanteans is probably a tier three deck don't say tier two because tier two in my opinion you can go to a regional and easily top with a tier two deck i've done it countless times tg last format come on now but anyways i don't even think that atlanteans are a tier two deck so i'm thinking if your only justification for keeping uh tribe virus banned is a tier three deck and it doesn't have many other practical purposes outside of that are you kidding me because even if we give you one copy of tribe virus you're still pretty much playing a tier three deck with one really good card in it and if you don't draw that really good card or you have no way to get to it or i you know negate its summon or get it out of play before you can you know summon it to the board you're back to playing a tier three deck and i don't i don't think that that's justification that's not enough justification because when you see the end results of these events where sukiyomi is unbanned and the card is like not played at all it's like okay well i've got my evidence you know what i mean so i i just want to know what people's thoughts on this you know <clears throat> what's what's your thought on the next time somebody makes a discussion saying that Sinister Serpent should be unbanned or maybe that Magician of Faith should be unbanned or, you know, maybe even Tribe Virus. Cards that you look at and you're like, I don't think you really do that much damage, but a lot of people are just like, eh, I'm still a little too scared. So, I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to get everybody's opinions and what you guys ultimately think Sukiyumi will end up doing this format because I look at the way the meta is shaping up and... With Laval's coming out and, you know, the decks that we have right now, I don't think Sukiyumi has any effect on this meta at all. Definitely still a fantastic card, though. It, it will have a place in competitive play. I just don't think it will shape the meta like people thought it would. Talk to you guys later.